Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Jessica Devereaux in Baltimore. Early on Thursday, the Greek Parliament approved a series of austerity measures in order to start receiving their 86 billion euro bailout. The deal has caused tensions in the Sears of party, as many feel betrayed by Prime Minister Tsipras, who was elected on a platform of rejecting austerity. While many, many are blaming domestic mismanagement as the cause for the potential Greek exit, what role did the Swiss banks play in inciting this crisis? Here to discuss all of this. This is James Henry. James is a leading economist, attorney, and investigative journalist who has written extensively about global issues. Thanks for joining us, James. You're quite welcome. So, James, let's get right into it. How are Swiss banks connected to the Greek debt crisis? As of the third quarter of 2009, shortly before the first bailout, uh, it turns out that uh, Swiss private banks accounted for about 39 percent of all bank loans to Greece. Um, and uh, that's a story that really hasn't been explored very uh, systematically by the media. We've heard a lot about French and German banks getting bailed out by the ECB and the uh, IMF. Uh, but the question is, what were the Swiss banks doing in lending uh, all this money to Greece? And I think it's an interesting uh, entree to another whole aspect of this, uh, which is the role of the Greek elite. Uh, their offshore accounts, their offshore shipping industries and other industries that are mainly held offshore, uh, not paying their fair share of taxes in Greece. Uh, so th this whole crisis uh, sheds light on this, uh, this kind of global offshore industry as well. Okay, let's get into that a little bit more. As I mentioned in the introduction, there's a new set of austerity measures that were passed on Thursday, but there's also a focus on reform and reforming um, Greece's second largest industry, I mean, excuse me, um, world's second largest industry, the international shipping industry. And I want to get a sense of what is the relationship uh, between that industry and the Swiss banks and connecting it to Greece a little bit more specifically, and what will these reforms actually do? Well, one of the provisions in the reform package that was passed, uh, in addition to clamping down on home foreclosure, the rights of uh, people to defend against uh, home foreclosures, which I find really brutalitarian, uh, is the idea of raising the uh, tonnage fees paid by uh, the Greek shipping industry. Uh, you know, the shipping industry is, well, it's not the second largest industry, that would be uh, banking or defense, but uh, certainly shipping is one of the most important uh, industries in the world. And this crisis really highlights the fact that uh, it's uh, basically an offshore industry. It's uh, a lot of, first of all, uh, a lot of the individual ships are registered in places like Panama, uh, Liberia, the Marshall Islands with relatively low uh, regulations of labor rights, of safety inspections, uh, insurance requirements, as well as registration fees. Uh, uh, secondly, uh, the owners of the industry and, uh, basically inhabit, for the most part, in the case of Greece, uh, they're not living in Greece. They're living you know, transnational citizens of nowhere for tax purposes in places like Geneva and London and, and New York. Uh, and these are very prominent, very wealthy families. Uh, so the issue arises, are they paying their fair sh share of taxes in Greece? And the answer, I think, at a general level uh, is definitively no. Uh, and third, you know, we have this uh, odd case of sophisticated Swiss banks lending heavily uh, to Greece uh, right up to the very end of 2009, 78 uh, billion euros of, of bank loans to Greece. Uh, I've got to believe that a lot of that represents what's called back-to-back -back loans, basically where you have uh, private banking assets accumulated by wealthy uh, individuals. Uh, you're feeling secure about lending to Greece because those loans are backed up uh, in the first instance by the deposits and the assets under management that these individuals have accumulated offshore. Uh, and secondly, uh, you know, you, you, you're likely to get bailed out by the Troika when it comes along. And I think that's indeed what we see in 2010. Uh, the Swiss exposure to Greece drops from 39 percent to about 3 percent, uh, only about 3 billion euros. So uh, suddenly those, uh, those bank loans get bailed out. All right. Uh, let's be a little bit more specific, James, here. Um, which families are, are involved in the shipping industry? 
Well, I'm hesitating to name names here. I mean, I think what we, you know, the, the, those uh, families that are well known as uh, Greek shipping owners, uh, you know, are uh, when we, Americans probably remember Onassis, uh, who accumulated a lot of uh, ships from the U.S. military in the late '40s, and then turned them into a very successful uh, tanker business internationally. Then Niarchos was another well-known name, uh, Latsis, Gulandris. Uh, uh, Patsis, uh, Karis. Um, there's a tiny, relatively tiny handful of relatively well-known, uh, uh, very wealthy families that have dominated this Greek industry. Uh, what the new Greek government in January pledged to do was to try to uh, get the cooperation of uh, havens like Switzerland and Cyprus. Uh, uh, in, indeed, uh, London can be considered a haven. Uh, uh, from the standpoint of international taxation, get their cooperation in recovering taxation uh, from some of the offshore wealth parked in these places by these uh, elite families. And they've absolutely gotten no uh, assistance whatsoever. Swiss have basically stonewalled them. Uh, there's an estimated 200 billion euros at least of private financial offshore money from Greece sitting there being not taxed. Um, so not only is the world shipping industry largely offshore, but you also have the owners of the industry arranging their affairs so they're not contributing to this crisis. All right, James, let's pause the conversation here because I want to talk a little bit more about what you mentioned considering recovering taxes and whether or not this Greek government can do this in the existing structure. So, James, right. thank you so much for joining us. Quite welcome. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.